What's up everybody, Do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Zero Hour because they just allowed us to now talk more about their next big update, which is called Operation Black Dawn. This is an update that is set to release sometime in May, so hopefully they actually reach that date and time. So let's go ahead and get into it. I think the first thing that we're going to be talking about is improvements and mechanics. We'll start off with improvements. So they've been making improvements to their third person animations. So to showcase that, I'm going to be looking at their before and after running animations and climbing animations. So let's take a look at that. Okay, now let's take a look at their climbing animations. So overall, these look pretty good. A lot better compared to the previous update, for sure. And improving the third person animations actually made the movement more smoother, at least in my opinion. Now let's get into the mechanics. First one we got here is Sway. To be honest, this one didn't seem too different to me. Maybe you saw something that was different. Let me know, because this next one definitely is different. Here we've got proning next to a wall. We're gonna start with the old one here. This one is definitely better than the previous update for sure. And the next one that we have here is Weapon Collision. Here's the old one.
The previous update did have weapon collision, but it was less responsive than it is in this newer update. So that's pretty neat. A couple of other things to note. They have now made it so that you can actually tap the shoulder of a friendly in front of you to let them know that you're ready to push in behind them when you decide to get into the building. Like there's an actual animation when you're standing behind him and you tap the shoulder and when you're receiving it, you will hear a audio cue. It literally sounds like a tapping on the shoulder. I wish it was like more of a shove. Bullets, hands in the air! Not what I want to do. I need to fucking unbind that key. It looks a lot different. Bullets, hands in the air! Do you like the tap? Yeah, I heard it. I think it's cool that the system is here, but kind of wish that it would actually move your screen just a little. You know, like shake the screen as a more of an indication because I feel like the audio just doesn't do enough. In my opinion, anyway. I end up missing those audio cues. And if you want to do an audio cue, you might as well touch it up just a bit. Like make it sound like there's a thing of gear, you know, because the guy that's touching you has gear on, right? Like you'll hear like a clanking of the gear as he's reaching over to you and then tap you on the shoulder. And then the screen shakes as he's doing it. But uh, yeah, so they added that in. Hopefully they improve the sound and do all that other stuff because we're going to be moving on here. Here's another thing that they added in. Instead of just shooting a wire now you can actually go up and disarm it while you're crouching down just snip it well at least they added that in it makes a little more sense another thing that they're doing is ads speed ads will change depending on movement it will vary whether you are idle or walking or sprinting the latter taking a longer time which i guess is cool we'll see how that works and i believe that's it for movement and mechanics so yeah let's talk about something else along with this update there is going to be a new weapon the g36k which is a pretty good weapon especially when you're playing with it in battle yeah down, hands in the air! Along with the weapon, they're going to be adding new attachments where you can customize your guns on the menu screen. I asked the developers if they could just give me a full list of what they're bringing to the table, and they sent me two pictures of a majority of the attachments. Now, these pictures obviously don't include everything. Like, the silencers aren't on here, and some of the attachments like laser pointers and flashlights aren't on here. Which, now that the flashlight is an attachment, you can actually remove the flashlight and not have a flashlight when you go inside the game. I think that that's cool, but at the same time, I now have an issue with not having light if somebody decides to turn off the map's lights. So they should make it so that every character now wears night vision goggles, in my opinion. Like, it shouldn't be a gadget. It should definitely be something that's just standard for everybody now. But yeah. So what I want to do really quick is just show off the guns with their iron sights and then put a different sight on every other gun. Just to show off where it's at. So let's go ahead and get into it.
pretty neat. If there was anything that I really wanted to complain about, it's just the fact that I kind of wish they could make it so that you can actually edit your weapons in game and not at the main menu. Because it's kind of annoying when I have to like back out to edit my stuff. I'd rather them make it kind of like Rainbow Six Siege where you can actually open up the side menu here and just like put a bunch of random attachments on the current weapon that you have. Because backing out of a current session and then coming back gets really annoying if you're the type of person that likes to edit your stuff all the time. Luckily I'm not that type of person but I really would like it if I could just you know open up a panel and just change out a scope or two. But we'll see if they actually add that in the future or not. Actually as I was recording this they just showed off that you are able to actually customize the gun that you have while you're in game so what do you know. So far the scopes seem to be pretty good but some of the reticle dots aren't always centered or when you're not aiming in you can see like the reticle dot like going kind of wacky off to the side there sometimes. So I hope they fix that. But yeah. So this update to me seems like they really wanted to do that replayability thing and one of the ways that they wanted to go about doing that is by adding points to the game where you can earn points and use those points to buy things in an in-game store and what is contained in this in-game store well there are these stylish watches that can indicate anything from your heart rate to how much time is left in the game and there's even youtuber watches which if you want the code for mine it is capital d-u-e-r-a-g 95 see unlike these other content creators i actually thought about the player you know while these other content creators were thinking about how to stylize the way that their watch looks i was like how can i help the player how can i make sure they know something useful about my watch so i decided to make it all about health i even gave it a backstory nicknamed the joker formerly known as dr95 pro this is a newer model of the prototype found during the lifetime of whatnot mofo industries a company tasked with specializing in developing spy gear and equipment but because mofo inc was considered a joke because of its lunacy and ridiculous gadget designs the company imploded crashed and burned but at least one good design came out of it the dr95 pro or the joker as a testament to its joke of a company despite its alias this piece of tech monitors the life signs and tells the wearer whether or not he or she is nearly dead so again if you would like access to this it is d-u-e-r-a-g all capitalized 95 pushing on from there you could also buy these bracelets no idea if these are from content creators too or or if they're just, you know, something else that they decided to add to the game. Another thing that I was discussing with them, how about voice lines? Would you like to hear me yelling and screaming in the game? That would be interesting. So that's pretty much all that's new in the menu screen. Let's push on to AI. So I actually took time to write stuff down here. <clears throat> the AI reacts to you much better this time around. It's not perfect, but it's an overall improvement from the previous update. All of my patrons that I gave access to have said that they prefer this version to the current one, because in the previous version, some of the suspects would surrender, but they would literally do it as you're literally pulling the trigger, giving all of us a penalty that was annoying along with the ai coming at you in a congo line they don't do that anymore it's not as much so what are some of the ways that they improved in well when the match starts and you shout or shoot your weapon the suspects will start talking and yelling saying that you're here they basically get alerted to your presence and begin to scatter to a hideable position nearby overall it's a pretty cool feature that we don't really get to see as much but you can definitely hear them it's a nice little touch i guess here's another feature if you're a crack shot you can shoot their hands and nine times out of ten they'll drop their weapon the ai is not more responsive when you yell at them but most of the time the suspects try to fake out the player by pretending to surrender then they snap back to the firing position when he's doing the fake animation this would honestly be the best time to shoot the gun out of his hand because it's relatively easy to see when they're faking it but it's a little harder to tell if they're actually going to surrender that's the one thing that i noticed they are now more responsive to flashbangs but they do not react when they clearly see a flashbang or grenade being thrown at them they only react when the flashbang explodes near them then you'll see them do like a disoriented animation which will more than likely make him surrender after you yell at them initially i had wished that the developers had made it possible for you to actually zip tie the enemies so that way when they get on their knees or on their back they wouldn't just you know be there by themselves but actually zip tied well now when they surrender and get down on their knees you can get behind them and actually zip tie the suspect pretty neat the ai is not as dumb as it used to be before if you shot one they would make like a congo line walking down to come and get you and until you either kill them all or ran out of ammo and got overwhelmed. Now there are fewer instances of a Congo line and more hiding around the corners or in closets, maybe under a bed or holding a hostage. They're just a lot more dynamic now than they were before. Still not perfect, but way more enjoyable than before. And that's pretty much all I really got to say about the AI. Let's go ahead and talk about this next thing here because this just kind of segues into my next thing here. Randomly generated environment or RGE as I like to call it. I say environment because it's not the map layout itself that changes it's the objects or assets or 
environment that gets moved around after every match or session. This is something that's actually completely unique to Zero Hour because games like Due Process and Six Days in Fallujah regenerate their maps layouts, while games like Ready or Not and Swap 4 just spawn their suspects and civilians in randomized locations. Zero Hour also spawns the suspects in randomized locations, but it also moves its objects in randomized locations too, changing the way that the environment works. And I've really noticed how the environment affects gameplay. Sometimes the map will put up barricades in certain places, forcing the player to find an alternative route to a specific area. It'll create cover for the bad guys or create cover for you. Rooms will straight up be either blocked or barricaded. So this entangled with suspects spawning in randomized locations after a match or a session really adds to the replayability of the game. I actually saw this firsthand in one of the maps, but they actually show off quite a bit of gifts here that make the rooms look different completely. And the last thing that we're really going to talk about here is bullet penetration. This system will have every weapon penetrate to various levels with this update. It will be able to penetrate through bodies. Each weapon's penetration level will depend on the weapon's stats, which yeah, each weapon has a stat now if you look at the uh, weapon screen. And it changes after every attachment you put on it, so pretty neat. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I mean, this update is basically like a replayability update, which is pretty cool if you ask me. But what are your thoughts? Is this going to make you play your hour for hours on end? Because I mean, look at those freaking prices in the, in the store right there. They're like in the thousands and I was playing maybe like one or two matches and I barely got like 130. Like damn, that's gonna take a bit. But at least the game's adding a whole lot of replayability. So I mean, that's, that's cool. So I think I'm gonna end the video here. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Zero Hour, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, just send two bucks a month, it really helps. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. Stick around, I cover a lot of tactical games. With that all being said, I wanna thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.